And question number three, why are you always talking about salvation? I get this from Christians or rather self-proclaiming Christians. Non-Christians have never been asked this question before because when I've been in other countries and we are dealing with witches and warlocks here in the States, New Agers, right? That's a whole nother story. Um, I always tell them that I have an agenda and the agenda is to do what God has left me and other born again individuals, his children in the world for, which is to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God so people don't go to hell. That's another question. Why do I talk about hell so much? But we'll get to that in a minute. So the reason I talk about salvation is that there is nothing else more important outside, obviously, of your family, our husbands, our wives, our children, then salvation, proclaiming that Jesus Christ, yes, everybody knows 316 came to the world to save the world, not to condemn it, but to save individual people, not your animals, not your dogs and your cats, but people who are made in the image of God. He came to save us. So when we become born again, he does not all of a sudden rapture us up. He has left us here with the mandate, which is to proclaim that number one, Jesus Christ is Lord, but to those who need to understand that they need to repent and turn from sin. And we'll talk about why I talk about sin as well, because that's another question. So yes, yeah, so why do I talk about salvation? Let's look at uh, Luke 19 and 10, where it says, for the son of man came to seek and save the lost. So if the son of man is now residing in the mortal bodies of believers, when I say believers, born again, people who love Jesus Christ, if he came to seek and save the lost, why are we not looking to seek the lost or looking for the lost or engaging with people who are lost so they can know that they can be saved from eternal damnation? And eternal damnation is saying no to God and spending eternity away from him in hell, suffering, okay? So now uh, two more verses that I thought to mention as it relates to this question. Uh, Mark 13, and the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. That's when the end will come. Matthew 24 and 14, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So notice it doesn't say when everybody becomes believers, when everybody becomes saved, born again, sanctified. It doesn't say that. We are here in the earth realm, again, born again believers, not self-proclaimed Christians, not self-proclaimed believers, born again, born anew, right? To preach the gospel of the kingdom. It doesn't say tell our testimony. It says preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Yes, there are scriptures that say we overcome the enemy, we overcome the devil, we overcome evil by the blood of the lamb and a word of the testimony. And we love the, not our life to death, unto death, right? But we are to preach the gospel. It doesn't say share the gospel. It doesn't say show the gospel. That thing that I heard in the West upon returning of, you know, don't preach the gospel, just um, share your testimony. The scripture doesn't say that. Don't preach, don't, don't say a lot, just show them the gospel. The scriptures don't say that either. It says to preach, proclaim, declare goodness, right? So we get to the next question. 